sanitation and lack of toilet facilities have been a problem for Limpopo schools for years. In 2017, the Equal Education visited some of 18 schools in the province and found pupils with limited or no water access. Those were using pit toilets as well as the only form of sanitation. Now, in 2018, the High Court ruled that the Limpopo Department of Education needs to develop a reasonable plan for getting rid of all pit toilets in all of the schools. Today, Equal Education will release its latest report on the state of water supply and toilet facilities in the province. For more on this, I'm joined by Kimberly Kumalo from the organization. Kimberly, thank you so much for your time this morning. I remember it was that update on the 2017 uh, report of Dikolo uh, Tsakotloka Siriti and looking at exactly how are we faring in being able to provide young people with something that really we should be deeming as a basic human right. But what does the report tell us? Um, so the release of our report is happening um, today. It's called Chirimo Shomori Kolongsakasiriti. It's a follow-up of uh, the report that you referred to, the Kolongsakasiriti. Um, so it refers to our 2020 school visits to the same 15 schools that we had visited in 2017. And what we are seeing is that although there are some um, improvements to water sanitation in Limpopo schools, the progress has been very, very slow. And uh, we are also seeing that um, some schools have not improved at all. So, for example, in the 2020 school visits, uh, we saw that six of the 15 schools that we visited are still relying on only plain pit toilets as a form of sanitation. Uh, two of the schools still have no access to water at all, and um, seven of the schools have unreliable access to water. So they have water on some days and not on others. So it's really unfortunate that um, three years after we initially uh, visited the schools, um, schools are still experiencing these these um, troublesome um, uh, environments. You know, as you're mentioning all of this, I, I'm really trying to figure out where the problem could be. Is it because these schools do not get adequate funding from the, the Department of Basic Education, therefore from Treasury? Is it because the money that has been allocated to the school somehow ends up stolen, which we've witnessed a lot of times? Or is it just no will, no will to provide young people who have to spend about eight hours of their lives every single day to give them just the basics? I mean, the basics of hygiene. We're not talking here about flashing lights. We're not talking here about, we're just talking about the ability to use a toilet. Where's the problem? So um, we've seen from um, Equal Education's end that the Limpopo Department of Education has a history of underspending and underperforming um, in terms of their budgets. So for example, in the six years between 2014 and 2020, the department um, um, underspent a total of 600 million rand of its infrastructure budget. Um, in addition to that, the Auditor General in the 2019-2020 report uh, highlighted that the department also has wasteful ex expenditure to the amount of 233 million rand. Um, although the department has, has attributed uh, these failures to things like um, not having having limited budgets, having limited capacity, uh, having uh, uh, challenges with supply chain management and implementing agents, we simply think that that's not um, a good excuse, especially because they underperform and underspend constantly. And in the meantime, um, learners and the school community at large has to really um, be in really compromising schooling environments that are not conducive to learning. But at the end of the day, um, and, and, and especially, especially during the trick season, uh, these learners are expected to perform just as well as learners who have um, all the amenities that are needed to make uh, a school a school. And it's simply unacceptable because the infrastructure, the school infrastructure laws and laws and standards for public school infrastructure really had laid down clear deadlines for when things like infrastructure, um, uh, sanitation and water should have been in schools. By now, uh, by 2020 already, schools should have had adequate uh, supply of water and sanitation already. So it's unacceptable that by in 2022, we are still seeing uh, these types of issues in schools. And I wonder, Kimberly, how much of it is because government is taking advantage of the plight of the poor, that if the poor feel as though they cannot fight for themselves and they do not have the, I mean, to be able to deal with bread and butter issues every day takes away from the greater fight of being able to provide, uh, you know, functioning toilets, the status quo and the like. You have to still deal with home. If home is not doing so well, you're not going to pick up another fight where you have to deal with a greater communal uh, issue. 
So how much of it is really taking advantage of the plight of the poor? The, we know for a fact that the poor can't fight because the poor has to resolve to fighting for bread and butter issues and that their fight will not focus on ensuring that their children get given perhaps better facilities for education. Mm. I think that's, that's a very important point. And when we look at marginalized communities, it's unlikely that they are able to even access um, the, 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 the Department of Education, even as a movement like Equal Education had very um, a, a lot of trouble getting responses from the Limpopo Department of Education. So can you imagine if you are just um, a single household or one school from a marginalized uh, background to be able to gain access to um, the, the, the Limpopo Department of Education or even know who to speak to about the issues that your schools are facing. So it's, it's, it's a very um, deliberate attempt to keep schools the way they are and like um, dodge their constitutional obligations to fix schools and especially for marginalized communities. Uh, yeah, as I said, at, at this point in time, what would be the appropriate intervention? I know that Equal Education has been fighting tooth and nail to be able to provide some kind of dignity in, in schools. And, and it looks as though there's a lax attitude towards achieving this. So wh where to from here? I mean, do we get, all get into the fight? What do we do? Um, so we know from the Polokwane High Court's um, judgment in 2021, um, the Limpopo Department of Education and the Department of Basic Education released an implementation plan to get rid of plain pit toilets. And um, the first priority level, which are schools that only have plain pit latrines, are meant to uh, be provided with, with relief by March 2023. So we are just um, monitoring that process very closely to see that um, that deadline is in fact met. Um, we are hoping that schools will be provided with relief. But of course, we've heard this before multiple times that plain pit toilets will no longer be a conversation in Limbopo. So it's important that we just monitor the process, uh, but the onus is really on the departments to ensure that they fulfill their constitutional obligation. We'll leave it there for now. Kimberly, much appreciated for your time. Kimberly Kumalo, uh, obviously looking at uh, some of this uh, report. This report actually that's coming out from the follow-on report of 2017 of the Golo Siriti. There's a follow-up report that was uh, conducted uh, in uh, 2020 that will then be released just to have the, the findings of what is happening in Limpopo schools where sanitation is con uh, concerned and just giving kids the basic human rights of a, just a functioning toilet. Who would have thought it would be that difficult?